Hey, Pippo, how are you doing? Hey, Cree, I'm okay. I'm fine. Thank you very much. How is in Italy? Oh, it's uh, I'm in Ravenna, which is more or less in the northeast of Italy. And the weather is perfect for me because it's sunny and cold, which I love. Yeah. Sun and cold are always a perfect match, in my opinion. Yep. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, here today is a bit, I don't know, was that fog or I, I don't oh. know what was that, but uh, at least the snow has been on the ground for more than one month now. So oh, yeah. it's it's been beautiful because normally November is terrible. It's just dark, but mm -hmm. with the snow, it lights up. So it's beautiful. Yeah. But let's talk about you. <laughs> Because yeah. for for this uh you are my last guest of of this 2023 so thank you for being the my big guest. close up thank yeah. you for having me and uh you are an editor for uh metal uh, um point italy, italy. yeah and, metal. Uh, rock hard italy yes so how did you start to to work as a editor uh, it's a long, long, long story, which goes back to ha, ah, when I was 19, 20 years old. I I was already in love with heavy metal, and I was obviously uh, buying um, magazines because, you know, the internet was still... Uh, um, at the at the beginning, uh, but um, since I have this uh, skill uh, of writing uh, about what I like, uh, writing about everything, I started doing it like for uh, an inside joke with my friends, uh, like giving reviews and stuff like that. And somebody told me, "Why don't you try and?" Um, and and do it for real because i have this uh eidetic musical memory so um whichever song or music i listen to they is stuck in my mind forever and i i thought i could use this as a you know a tool for uh for writing etc et so i started in 2003 with a website that still exists called Metalized in Italy. And then two years later, I decided to contact uh, uh, the staff from Metal Eat uh, because they were bigger and they were one of the biggest in Italy and I wanted, you know, the best. Uh, <laughs> and so they, uh, they asked me to write some uh, rehearse um pieces and they accepted it and it's been 18 years uh, that i've been writing for them uh i left in a certain period because i became the press agent for a um a, a famous italian heavy metal band which is vision divine and then uh, uh two years ago i was contacted this time I was contacted uh, by the staff of Rock Art Italy. Uh, of course, I knew them. They are uh, probably the biggest magazine in Italy, uh, without any doubt. Um, and they told me that they were reorganizing the staff. And so they asked me if I could be interested in joining in. Um, first of all, I wanted to speak clear with uh, the boss at Metalit and be clear that I, if I had chosen to go with Rock Hard Italy, I would never leave Metalit. So I had, I would have to do both jobs, but uh, not repeating myself. Uh, so it wasn't easy to organize, but uh, here, here we are. I'm finishing the second year with Rock Hard Italy and that's the story so far. Yeah, yeah. I can relate on the working with, uh, because I work beside this uh, project of Metal Pizza that is uh, quite new. I have those other two web, I don't have, I, I 
collaborate with those two websites. And uh, yeah, you have always to, if you do the interview for both the magazine, mm -hmm. you have to change things. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the way that you write. So it's not, it's not easy, but... No, <laughs> I actually have an agreement, uh, a written agreement that I cannot do the same piece for both of them. So if I have uh, a review... I don't know if I have to review Dream Theater for for Metal It, I cannot do it for uh, Rock Hard and vice versa. It, the same with the interviews. Uh, so it's a matter of who comes first. And uh, since these two are very different, because one is a magazine, a printed magazine, and the other one is a website, usually the printed magazines this big uh, receive the promo kits like two months in advance yeah. so i usually have uh the stuff assigned two months in advance for a card where in the website i can choose i can pick last minute uh, or i you know i am there from 20 years so uh i'm you know in my in my home i can move freely inside yeah. the you have a uh, free hands to to do most or less, most more or less, uh, what you want in a, in a sense. Yeah, in some ways, yes. Always respecting the yeah, the others yeah. people, the other people's yes. jobs, obviously. Yeah, and uh, you you are doing uh, reviews, interviews. Yeah. Then yeah. Uh, on uh, Metality, you have a tire list. What yeah. else do you have? <laughs> tell, tell us more. Uh, about the things that I do in the in the two in the, magazines. In the two magazines. In the, yeah. in, okay, for Rock Hard Italy, I have reviews. I have big interviews. I had the opportunity of interviewing very big names, uh, like I don't know uh, the uh, singer of Jet Rotal or uh, Nita Strauss or. Uh, Dragon Force, or uh, uh, I don't know, Dean Castronovo, uh, or big names, Paul Gilbert, uh, Extreme, Nuno Bettencourt, uh, big, big ones. Um, but the majority of the job I do for the uh, printed magazine for Rock Art Italy is uh, reviewing and interviewing. This is what I do. Uh, in that magazine, there are some... Um, some parts of the magazine which are already predetermined and you just have to fit the holes. Uh, in uh, Metalit, I am in the creative team, so we come up with ideas, uh, me and the boss uh, and the other guys of the directing uh, stuff. We come up with new ideas. We are moving more and more towards, uh, towards the video um social video uh side of the of the thing because a website uh, is a website and uh uh it has to evolve it's not like the printed magazine you, you have to evolve because there are 10,000 websites coming up uh and they will eat you in a second so if we have to invent uh always something new, etc. So this idea of the tier lists, for example, uh, came to me while watching videos from other categories, other stuff, mainly cinema, which is one of my, um, uh, one of the things that I like the most. Uh, and I noticed that more and more people were uh, playing with this tier lists. And I say, well, why not? Uh, why, why don't we do it? Uh, and so we, I proposed the idea and the guy said, okay, go. And uh, so I pre-prepared uh, three or four issues of the project. And then we started because um, the idea was to have a weekly uh, tier list. And it's not easy. It's a lot of jobs because I... Uh, want to listen to every single fucking record. Can I say fucking? Okay. Uh, I hope that uh, it, it is not going to to 
put down, but I don't, I don't think because other other people. You, you can bleep me. I can put a bleep <laughs> in case yeah. if uh, some something happen. Yeah. So even if I know the band, I want to re-listen to all the, the discography uh, because I want to listen it uh, from the beginning to the end uh, because it's e easier for me to uh, put things in the right order without being, uh, you know, um, misled by uh, youth memories or, you know, affection towards uh that particular album or stuff like that. So it's a long process. It takes me hours and hours and hours. Uh, and then I take notes. I basically listen to music, uh, to the music for the tier lists every single moment that I have, uh, besides listening to the music for the reviews and listening to the music for the interviews and stuff. Uh, and I take notes and then I have a pre prepared uh, like script in a way where I have all the notes and then I just improvise on the on the camera uh, with my notes uh, under my eyes. That's it. Basically. Yeah. Uh, so far, how many uh, tired, li tired list uh, do you have? Actually, uh, one hour ago, I have finished recording the number eight. And uh, I'm planning the first one for next year already. Yeah, so, so the, la yeah. the last one for this year is done. Yeah, it's done. And I just have to uh, transform it into a unique file and send it to the the gods of metal eat and they will upload on youtube great and uh when when it comes to um interview f and reviews um i think that uh, uh every editor uh have his preference on doing interviews or reviews which one is your favorite ah uh I, I I love both. Uh, I I grew up doing reviews, so, but you know it's a it's a a different thing. Doing reviews it's like masturbating. It's <laughs> it's like you know By yourself. you you talking to yourself about the, what you and then you know uh, having people looking at you while you masturbate. So it's very. Uh, non-interactive uh an interview uh gives you puts you in a different position because when you write a, a review jokes aside when you write a review you are the expert you should be uh and you are the protagonist if you want in the sense that you decide how to write it and what to highlight and what to not highlight etc in an interview uh you are just the microphone uh in a way uh but you can interact uh with the artist and the interaction can influence the type of interview that you have so if it depends on your character it depends on your personality if you're an extrovert person if you have fantasy and you go with the flow or take the joke and go on or if you just stick to the prepared uh, questions that you have uh, and just go for the job you know it depends it's for me it's most mostly a matter of personality the type of person that you are and uh what kind of interviewer are you? Are you the one that prepare all the question and uh, go with the scam? Or um, do you go with the improvisation? Um, I I tend I don't like to improvise when I when I work. So I go super prepared. Uh, and I like, for example, I know that I have 10 questions and I prepare 15. Um, but then I am always ready to diverge 
uh, because something funny ha happens or the artist says something that I like or that we relate, etc. So I I just change, but I return to the to the plot. Yeah. yeah. So I have I have a scheme. Yeah. I always have. I also have a you know also for this metal pizza I I do my job of uh, searching. Uh, mm -hmm. Information very important because otherwise it's like what I'm going to ask. It's a bit, it's a bit embarrassing. Yeah. Um, but uh, wh when it comes to um, let's say face to face, uh, not not with not yeah. with when you are at home with a car, yeah, on their own, but uh, face to face, uh, um, I still have the piece of paper with uh, some notes, but mm. I I try to remember everything, but then it's mm -hmm. festival time when you have more than one interview. Yeah, you, it, it's impossible to remember everything. You can remember yeah. more or less something, but then uh, it's important sometimes to check mm. what what I what I was yeah, yeah, absolutely. thinking to ask. But uh, do you remember who was the first band or artist that you did interview? Ah. No, <laughs> but uh, let me think about it for a second. I, I'm sure uh, that I started with small bands or new bands. Like I, I remember probably it was uh, Trick or Treat. You know the band? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think that my first real interview was with Trick or Treat. Uh, like I don't know, fifteen years ago or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do you know many why. interviews at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, why? I didn't do many interviews at the beginning because doing interviews is very different from writing reviews, and you have to have it. Uh, and I didn't have it, uh, so I had to practice a bit uh, interviewing smaller uh, bands, etc. Uh, there's a, an emotional component. Uh, it, it depends again on, on your personality. I'm a very emotional guy in all senses, so I get excited quickly. I get frustrated. I get bored. Uh, you can see it in my face. If I am having fun, I'm I'm not good at uh, you know masking, uh, and so yeah, I feel that yeah. Thinking back in time, I start to do uh, reviews, interviews, so ten years ago actually, mm -hmm. and um, I remember at the beginning uh, I was more into the reviews because mm -hmm. the interviews were. Uh, scary somehow mm. and uh well my english is not like yours but uh, yeah mm -hmm. i was uh insecure about my english and my capacity yeah. and uh, um then uh, one of the first interview i did i got from the person that i interviewed um uh, a really bad feedback she wrote to oh. my boss and uh, oh really yeah, and uh, because she said that she didn't say that, but I I remember that I I actually I have this my microphone my where I record yeah. everything. Uh, I think that the interview is still in inside of here because <laughs> all the interviews are still here. After ten years, I don't know how many, <laughs> but maybe I should, you should uh, back up. <laughs> yeah, I should do something or maybe buy a new one also. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, this person uh, uh, was not happy and I remember it was my first interview I think and oh. uh, I was like so where are let's we start. do this and uh, no let's do here and we were in a, in a club and there was I music playing oh. and then when I start to listening and writing down it was not clear some parts yeah. so i went maybe is this okay but uh, it was really something not important no related to the band related to how she start when she started singing i think that mm -hmm. i thought that she was uh, 15 but she started 5 <laughs> okay something like nothing support yeah and then i was uh, to my boss maybe it's better that i'm not going to do interview but then she uh -huh. another 
and other people were like uh, supporting me and saying, come on, you are going to do this. And now I'm doing also this. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> but at the beginning is um, is, is a really- Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, if, in particular, if you are uh, an insecure person or emotional person. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it takes a lot and of- And the language. Yeah, language but is... it, uh, you know, uh, I remember also doing interviews and uh, then putting for the other uh, website and putting on YouTube and the people commenting about uh, the way I pronounce in English or my okay. accent. No, there, there, there are not many of these comments, but they were a bit triggering at the beginning. Yeah. And, uh, I was yeah. like, okay, for example, this metal pizza is because I want to embrace my my accent also. And uh, Why not? It's 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 part of me and uh, yeah, it's and good. Then I can always improve. <laughs> yeah, everybody improves until they die. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. You never you never stop learning. Never stop. But let's get back to to you because no one care about me. <laughs> we are here for mm. you. And um, you play five instruments. <laughs> So yes. what what instruments do you play? I play the guitars. <laughs> I play the bass. I play the drums. I have a, an electric set over there. Yeah, you can't see it. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. No, you can. We can see. And then I sing, and then I play the some piano, some violin. Um, I'm. I like I I live in in the music. Yeah. When did you start to play, and what was the first uh, instrument? I started playing piano when I was five years old, uh, because uh, I had a vertical piano at my home, and I was having fun. Um, my mom said, "Why don't you try some lessons?" And those lessons became two years. But I was too little, and I was I, I wanna I, I wanted to have fun, and doing less piano lessons at five years old is not funny. It wasn't funny for me, at least. Uh, and so I begged my mom. I said, "Please stop. I don't want to play anymore." So I stopped at eight years old, and then they um, gave me this exact this guitar for my 12th birthday. And this guitar stayed in my closet for two years. So I did never touched a, a guitar. I didn't, I didn't know how to, how to play the guitar. And then um, when I was 14 years old, it was a particularly bad moment for me. My parents were about to divorce. I was particularly uh, depressed. And I remembered that I had this piece of wood inside the closet and I started playing it without knowing how to playing it like with the radio on and trying to understand how to tune and what's the tuning so absolutely blind uh with some uh memories of theory musical theory from the piano lessons I started playing the guitar and that's I could say that it saved my life. So I became a musician, little by little, a, a guitarist. Uh, so that was my instrument of choice. And I played the, the guitar live uh, for the first time when I was 15 years old. And uh, I've been playing the guitar live for like 28 years, something like that. Then I went on to the bass and now I'm going to the drums, but just because I want to, I like to discover, I yeah. love the music so much. Yeah, music is important and uh, learning to play an instrument is uh, is good for your brain. So Ooh, it's, it's so something much. amazing and yeah, always being able to play something, even if you don't become like uh, a super musician, no, yeah. but play just to 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 feel the music, uh, to feel a, <coughs> a different a kind of uh, sensation that the instrument can give you. It's it's something amazing. Yeah, 
And music helps you with, with a lot of things. It helps you with anxiety. If you have anxiety, it helps you with your uh, language learning. Uh, practicing music uh, uh, has the same neurological uh, path than learning languages. So the more you study an instrument, the better you become at learning a language because you develop the same year. In Italian, we say avere del buon orecchio, uh, a good ear uh, for music and for languages is basically the same neurological process. So when a child grows learning, playing instruments, you can make sure that it's gonna learn languages as well. And that's why I'm the living proof that this is true. Yeah. And uh, talking about languages, uh, you are an English teacher and translator, um, and you teach in a uh, uh, high school. In high school, yeah. yeah. So how is the life of a metal ed teacher? <laughs> <laughs> uh it's funny because um uh there are a lot of metal guys and girls uh, uh they stay uh hidden most of them because you know we metal heads are have always been the nerds you know uh, the different ones, the outcasts, and it still is like this. So it's so romantic to see these guys with these, uh, you know, they don't have wear uh, t-shirts or stuff like that. But when I say, I don't know, uh, when I say said but true, somebody like, just like, I know the song uh, and stuff like that. So um, being able to share uh, this passion for heavy metal with some young generations is um, a hope for me, hope for the future. Uh, uh, I think metal, metal guys and girls will never die because uh, this is not a trend. This is a, a way of living a way of staying in the world being metal is something that is not uh taylor swift or maneskin or i don't know trends uh that we they will pass we will stay forever i this is what i firmly think and i can tell you by watching these young teenagers every day doing their things that music in general is a big part of their lives. Uh, not only heavy metal, of course, but um, they need it. Yeah. In a world like this, without any reference point, uh, being part of a musical community, uh, for example, uh, the metal community, but not only the metal community, is very important for them uh, because they need families. They need uh, points of approaching to stay connected to the reality yeah so it's very that's important true. that's true and uh, you um you name a uh, moneskin and mm -hmm. uh it's uh it's i think it's curious curious huh? curious how different i think that band is seen in italy compared mm -hmm. to other countries um in italy every time that on a Facebook appears something about Moneskin. There are comments. I, I I just got to read the comments because it's yeah. I I don't know. People it's, hate it's, them. Yeah, there is so much hate, and uh, I'm like, why do you care if you don't like their music that much? <laughs> and what's your opinion on uh, on the band? Uh, uh, because uh, I think that. Uh, something even if you don't you don't like the band uh, but uh, thinking about what they may uh, do mm. for the young generation yeah absolutely this is what i think uh i don't particularly like the music but i don't dislike it either it's not my cup of tea uh but it's okay 
is rock and roll. Uh, uh, the guys have been great at building an image and becoming the super, super mega hyper superstars that they have become. So chapeau oh. to them uh, because they did it what nobody had done in, I don't know, decades. In Italy, centuries, never, yeah. ever, probably. Uh, have. And so I, I only have respect for them. Not only this, uh, by listening to these bands, a lot of young generations get attracted uh, and fall in the web of uh, hard rock uh, and heavy metal and stuff like that. So talking about that side, we only have to thank these bands because they they play. They fucking play rock and roll, okay? They go on stage every fucking night with a bass, a guitar, the drums, and a guy with a microphone, and they fucking play. And this is rare. Uh, and zillions of young people watch them, uh, love them, and they probably, uh, a girl will pick up a bass tomorrow, thanks to Victoria, or uh, I don't remember the other name, sorry, but a lot of young generation, a lot of young people would probably uh, play guitar or become heavy metal singers because of Moneskin. So thanks yeah. to them. Yeah. I, 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 I That's what I did. I, I saw Freddie Mercury and I said, wow, what the fuck? <laughs> What's, what are these guys doing? I want to do this. Even if Queen uh, is not my first love. They have been my greatest, absolutely greatest yeah. love of my yeah. life. And uh, I'm I'm agree about Moneskin with what you say, um, because I I enjoy some of their songs. Uh, mm -hmm. The Wall uh, album that was that in January that came out. The the, uh, the last one, say Rush, I think. Yeah. Because now they release uh, another version of, of Rush, but I, I, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, what, I'm not sure what happened, but I saw yeah. something going on. But uh, I must say that the that album, I was disappointed because I, I didn't felt uh, that, uh, you know, that's like that, that's something. Okay. There were two songs, but other were just. Mm, fillers Hello. and mm -hmm. uh, i know that they can do much more okay but maybe you know it's always exper experimental bands artists in general they need to experiment to to find mm -hmm. what 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 they want because if you don't experiment you don't know where, where yeah, absolutely. Go. so maybe in the future they are going to release some metal album you never know <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and then, and then uh, you have to remember that they're young, and then you have to remember that they have become super famous in a moment. So there are uh, music businesses and producers and money makers moving around these four yeah. kids. So you know they probably push them to yeah. do the album. Uh, you know, um, in a hurry because they had to make money and stuff like that. So it's understandable. Yeah, true. Talking about uh, uh, albums and uh, live music, you are also a sound engineer. Um, how did, did you study for, for sure for, for became? A, no. A, okay. <laughs> so how did you became a sound engineer? <laughs> I had the chance to working in a lot of studios as a musician and I am curious as I told you and I became friends with the sound engineers in the studio and I just asked them if I could stay there and watch them uh, and then uh, I asked them if I could stay there and watch them and just move one button and then I asked them if I could move two buttons and little by little I started to understand how all this works. I'm not a 
technically a proper sound engineer. I know something, but uh, it's a very vast world. Uh, and being a professional sound engineer, it's like playing uh, like, like Steve Vai. You have to study your ass off. It's yeah. not that easy. And so I know I cannot say that I'm sound engineer. I can say that I can do something, some simple stuff, but. But you have it. been working with band doing this job or. The sound engineer? Yeah. No, 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 no. I okay. just did it for myself. I did it in cooperation with a proper sound engineer. I did uh, co engineering. Yeah, a lot of times, but not alone by myself because yeah. I don't own the studio. Yeah, yeah. And um, since you play all those instruments, uh, do you play in any band or do you play just for yourself? I have played in a zillion bands uh, up till two or three years ago. And then all of a sudden I decided it was enough uh, and that I won didn't want to play anymore because the level I was playing uh, was not satisfying for me anymore. Uh, playing covers in the same places uh, for fifty bucks, um, but it wasn't for the money. It was for the uh, fatigue, uh, having a. a Having a gig yeah, is a uh, eight to ten hours long process. People most most of the times don't realize that you start at three, four p.m. loading your car with all the things that you need, and then unloading at the venue, and then uh, putting everything in place, and then sound checking, and then the show, and then. Unpacking, loading again, and going to home, and then unloading from the car. So it's a very long and exhausting thing, and I had enough of it. Since I also write music, I start. I created like a small studio set up here, and I just playing for myself, writing down some pieces. Who knows? But I play every day. I never stop playing. Yeah. That's great. And uh, let's go to talk about uh, metal in general. So how mm -hmm. did you start to listen to metal? Uh, my, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I saw the video clip of the final countdown by Europe. And I remained like, like this Amazing. because I saw these guys with amazing long hair and guitars and lights and uh, whatever. And I said, I want to be like this. So I started thanks to Europe, thanks to the final countdown. And then I had the luck of having good uh, high school um, schoolmates that listened to music and they started copying cassettes for me. Um, uh, and so I discovered, but I didn't start from metal. I started from Pink Floyd and Dire Straits, and then I went to Queen, and then I had the luck of having this, uh, school guy, schoolmate that started giving me Faith No More, uh, Extreme, uh, uh Van Halen, uh, and, and so, you know, little by little, I moved around in the world. Of metal, and I started that I like uh, heavier stuff, but that was just my own process. I started buying magazines and trying, buying something and listening. Yeah, yeah, reading the review and go to the store and buying the the CD and say, yeah, let's exactly. See if it's my my cup of tea, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much. Uh, well, nowadays, maybe not anymore. It's sad, but I hope that now people start again to buy uh, the CD or uh, vinyl, mm -hmm. uh, 
even cassette because there are bands mm -hmm. that, that are releasing the cassettes. Uh, yeah. So uh, it, it it will be nice that people start to buy because uh, Spotify, uh, yeah, it's it's great that you can listen whenever you want, yeah. but to support the band. Uh, and if you, you really have to love buy. an album, you are going. I I I like to. So the smell of everything. <laughs> yeah, me too. So, <laughs> so it's a uh, unpacking and yeah, smelling uh, it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Not that important thing. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think that most of us did the same as you. So reading the review and going to buy. <laughs> yeah. That's why I feel a responsibility now when I write, because I remember that thanks to people like me, I am here now in the world of heavy metal and uh, and I love this music. So I'm very careful every time I write good stuff and especially bad stuff about a uh, record because yeah. I, I understand the effort that goes behind it. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, writing a uh bad review is not easy because you have to measure the words that you are using you are to think mm -hmm. how to put the the review to not uh make it fancy really bad. Or... yeah yeah so it's it's yeah. it's not easy no it's very difficult but it's yeah. funny sometimes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh what was the the first album that you both do you remember of course and it's very easy to say because it was the final countdown by europe yeah that was my first record both with my money uh, and then i fell into queen and i started buying everything starting from greatest hits one which was my door to the world of Queen and then I started buying everything from Queen I am a little obsessive guy so when I discover something that I like I buy everything uh, and then <laughs> and then I move to another thing and I buy everything about this and so I went to you know by, from group phases. to group yeah phases yeah yeah it makes sense <laughs> yeah and uh, what's your favorite band if you have one, if I could choose, oh, I would I would tell you Symphony X. Uh, mm. If those bastards decided to make the new album, because we've been waiting for nine fucking years, uh, but uh, I think they are the perfect combination of. Uh, the things that I like in in music, which is. A fantastic singer because Russell Allen is unbeatable. Uh, great uh, guitar licks, especially neoclassical, which I love because I love that style. I grew one of my obsessions when I was young was Ingve Malmsteen. So uh, you know Michael Romeo is the proud son of Ingve Malmsteen, and then they have this symphonic. Uh, cinematic orchestral thing that I love uh, so much. So for me, uh, Symphony X is like the perfect uh, union of I don't know Mozart, Dream Theater, and I don't know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> all that stuff together. And uh, if you have to pick one album as the best metal album ever, in your opinion, personal opinion, like in the history of metal. Yeah, which one is the most uh, important in your opinion for you? For me? Yeah. Oh, God. For me, probably Images and Words by Dream Theater. Yeah. Because uh, that's where I understood that metal was not only uh, being fast and screaming and being violent musically and uh, because I love uh, these intricate things uh, and when I listen to Pull Me Under and the other songs Metropolis etc I just remained like yeah 
speechless. It's a, it's a yeah. world full of uh, emotion and uh, I don't it's it's in my top albums also so it's it's a big thing and uh, I don't know how many time I have listened to that album. Yeah, it's, me it's too. It's so beautiful. It's, it's so, so well beautiful. made. And... But yeah, but if you give me five minutes I'm gonna tell you like a uh, hundred albums that are like too important for me in metal i could name uh, a few if you want but go ahead if you like master puppets oh well yeah <laughs> who doesn't uh, you puppets? know how can you conceive metal without master puppets and then painkiller yeah uh, another big just big classic so big these these albums are so important. In, I I don't know. Uh, ooh, how many how many I have met, and then I also love the hard rock. So I could tell you leaning to it by Mr. Big, uh, or I can tell you Pump by Aerosmith. Uh, oh, there's so many great yeah, albums. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's uh every time that I ask this question, uh, the the best album, everyone has uh, this uh, this moment that oh god, how <laughs> can I choose? <laughs> there there yeah. are so many, but uh, I know that uh, every one of us has those few most important, those yeah. that uh, that make feel you something. Yeah, something yeah, like that. that's true. But yeah, and. Uh, what was the first live gig that you have ever seen? You mean heavy metal live gig? Metal. I, live. Th um, I think it was uh, Dream Theater and it was the tour of uh, God. Uh, Metropolis Part 2, Sins from My Memory, 1999. I think that was the first one. Was in Italy. Was in Rome, opening band, Pain of Salvation. Hey. So, you know, I was lucky because the, I love those guys now that I yeah. heard them. Yeah. Yeah. That there was is great. Uh, any gig, you, do, you don't need to say the, the name of the band because we don't want to... Uh, tear up anyone but there is any gig that you were uh, upset that, that you you were expecting more and then it was not that good many especially festivals uh because i think it's something uh also also instrumental festivals are difficult are difficult for bands because they have to uh, reimagine their sets. Uh, bands are very uh, routine friendly. So if you change the routine, uh, they go. What do I have to do? Yeah, and and some bands, some festivals sucked. Uh, especially Motley Crue. I remember uh, on a Gods of Metal festival, um, I went to see. Hammerfall, they did great, but the opening bands were awful. Uh, and the same uh, happened to an opening band, which I will not name, uh, uh, opening for Camelot some years ago. Yeah. I won't tell the names. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember that, uh, you know, uh, in Milan, I think something like 10 years ago, um, at Amorphis gig, hmm. there were two op uh, band opening, uh, and the one was from Spain. I don't even remember the name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, I know, it was so boring, and mm. uh, I, I was not taking photos at that time because I, I also doing photography things. Okay. During the gigs uh, festival, I take photos. Um, but the band was so static on that stage. And the, the, the whole thing was, it was not working. 
Mm-hmm. But I think I don't know if they made if they reached some some important goals. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember. Never heard of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it it was something that. And I hope maybe they they improve them and mm. uh, but who knows? Yeah. Do you remember the name of the band? No, zero zero memory. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was that you bad canceled. that I yeah I just you, canceled. You didn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah. I was just waiting that they they finish. <laughs> it was like a watching uh, trying to get into, but it didn't happen. It didn't. So yeah, I you can get it. Yeah. Then I know, well, I have seen so many bands and uh, also so many underground bands. Mm-hmm. Uh, not all of them were great, no. <laughs> but uh, there were also some really amazing discover. Yeah, and I I love to discover new bands. Yeah, and- me too. When when the band give that something and uh, you yeah. see the band live and you um, you fall in love with the band and then uh, you go and start to listen to their music and and you're like a new world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I understand. It's beautiful because yeah, big bigger bands. Yeah, yeah, you know what you are more or less what to expect, but with new bands. You don't know nothing, so it's yeah, it's really different. Do you prefer to go to see festival or club gigs? I prefer club gigs, uh, because I prefer to concentrate on one artist at a time. Festivals are usually very dispersive. Uh, audio is not always spot on not even in the clubs it depends but i prefer smaller venues smaller places i can concentrate better i don't love humanity so the less humans around the better so (laughs) (laughs) so this is why i prefer going to the clubs you know uh i have uh, i always thought that i'm a very social person and i am a social person but with time i discover myself that I sometimes, sometimes I I'm doing a, a social. I I I'm working with people every day. I'm talking with people all the time. So sometimes during the weekend, if there is a gig, I, I love going to gigs because there is music. You don't need to talk with anyone, or you talk yeah. not that much, and you you have the music yeah. that uh, recharge oh. you. <laughs> yeah. Or do you just sing along together? Yeah, it's uh, it's or just you go with the with the flow, <laughs> with the rhythm, <laughs> <laughs> and start to add banging, and then the the, the day yeah. after, why my neck is so sore? <laughs> yeah, classic. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. let's take my special jar, the one with the random topics, and let's see what we are going to, oh, oh, to oh, get oh. for you. So this one looks. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this one is not the first time that comes, and it's fears so do you have my fears oh yes i i do i have a lot of fears i um i am afraid of oh my god i'm afraid of heights yeah but i try to cope with it avoiding it for the most of the times. I am afraid of being alone, uh, not in the sense that being alone in a room, but in the sense of being abandoned. I'm a, I'm afraid of remaining alone in my life. This yeah. is a big fear that I have, uh, but I'm working hard for not making it happen. Um, I'm afraid of losing my sight. Yeah. I don't know why. I have this fear since I was a child. Maybe I know why, because I had an uncle who was blind. And that just yeah, yeah, yeah. triggered something in me when I was young. 
yeah yeah and then okay i'm afraid of sharks obviously <laughs> and big animals that can kill me but not particularly i love animals that's any their job animals, any small animals that uh, you are scared of like yeah uh, um some insects spiders maybe but just it's more like yeah uh, than being afraid so yeah, no, not so much. Yeah. I love cats, dogs. Uh, I have cats running around the house. How many? Two. I have also two. <laughs> what For are the their names? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the big one uh, is called Giancarlo, uh, <laughs> AKA, AKA Junkie. And uh, the, the little girl uh, is called uh, Kim Jong Miao. Uh, aka keep me nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but let's get another topic and see where we are going to mm -mm -mm. this one dreams um, so what was your dream growing up what was your the thing that you were dreaming of became, for example? Or... Becoming a rock star. Becoming a musician, professional musician, and becoming a rock star. That was my dream. Yeah. And so I'm happy because I stayed in the ground. Yeah. yeah. I didn't become a rock star, but I'm here living with music. Yeah. So it's okay. I had uh, may maybe weird dreams. Of, I don't know. I maybe it's because I was watching all those uh, cartoons, anima animes in, uh, in on TV, and uh, I had this that I want to be a uh, kind of hero, kind oh to, yeah, in superpower and to me, me too, me save too, me too. people. <laughs> me too. Me too. Me too. So. Yeah, it was not possible because I don't have superpowers, apparently. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I have a... For the moment. ...to discover. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm i helping people with the job that I do, so... Yeah. You are enough. superhero. Close enough. <laughs> I, I'm a kind of yeah. superhero. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah, and... Uh, do, do you dream during night? Ah, dreams. Uh, this is a big question. I don't remember my dreams, almost ever, almost ever. I I don't have a. Uh, I have. Uh, I get asleep very quickly, but I wake up very quickly. So uh, I usually sleep uh, a little, not so much. Uh, but I have a good sleep. But I don't remember my dreams. Almost ever. So I can't tell you if I have recurrent dreams or stuff like that. Because I don't remember. <laughs> I never remember them. I don't know why. Yeah. When I was oh. young, I remember my dreams. Yeah. There is any, any dream or nightmare that you did when you were younger that you still remember that was so... So maybe scary. For example, I have one. It was so scary that I still remember. I I remember I very often I dreamt of falling from falling from a building. Okay. Uh, this was my fearful dream. So I was all by myself. No monsters, no uh, dangers. I just were, was falling from this high building and I was afraid of dying, obviously. Yeah. Um, and that was my scary dream. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking... Give me more. Take another card. Let's take another, just because it's you. <laughs> and because it's the, last, it's the last of this year, so... Yeah. Let's let's see this one. There is one in the middle here. I can, I can. Here and uh, mm. here. Well, how is it? Beard. Yeah. So, well, you have uh, your facial hair. How do you take care of them? 
So you want to start with this? <laughs> <laughs> I I had I had long long hair when I was in my metal bands, uh, and this is when I was seventeen to twenty eight seven, and then I did the military service and I cut everything. And then I started losing something. And so now my hair is short, as you can see. Uh, about the beard, I've always had the goatee since my first exam at university, because uh, at that time they said it was a good luck charm. Uh, and the exam went very well. And so I said, okay, I'll, I, I'll keep it for the second exam and then the third exam and then that's it it remains yeah. uh it was only the goatee but now i always have some short beard always because i don't i don't know i prefer i it's uh stimming it yeah. relaxes me to touch the beard yeah uh, i play with the beard a lot uh so i like to to have yeah. something in my face to play with <laughs> That's How it. do you take care of your facial hair? Uh, very simple. Uh, water, soap. <laughs> uh, I have a trimmer uh, to keep it in the same measure, more or less. And I have some creams that I use, but nothing serious, nothing yeah, particular. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know there is. Nowadays, there are a lot of products. Oh, yeah. So the, the, there is a not anymore that stigma that men don't use products, but yeah, nah. for men, so just buy and, <laughs> and yeah, it's a new it's a new market. They are they are selling out uh, uh, very, very big because you know now the market is open. Even men can use creams and balms and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. why not? It's it's really different. Uh, talking about about air, not about your air, but about uh, your students' air. Those that listen to rock metal, uh, the guy talking about the guys, not the girls. Mm -hmm. Do they have long hair? Not particularly. It's not like uh, uh, it was once that you could recognize. The metal hat immediately, uh, and I tell you more. Uh, it's more girls than boys uh, that listen to heavy metal now. I don't know why, but okay. I'm in a. I teach in a school where I have more girls than boys. It's probably for that, but uh, um, no, they don't. Uh, long hair is not. Uh, um, uh, trendy anymore they they tend to color their hair like blue or green or whatever pink orange etc so you can probably recognize the metal head for what they wear um, more than the hair yeah yeah and um, now it's not about those uh, random topic but uh, I, i'm curious to know how do you see the the metal scene uh, in Italy nowadays? I think we are in a very, very good moment. Uh, little by little, uh, uh, a lot of bands have become uh, getting big, uh, even outside Italy. Uh, and, you know, even small bands that you uh, nobody knew at the beginning, and now they're great. I can name you bands that i have interviewed or uh, reviewed etc that now are working with very big managements uh or italian people playing in um foreign bands like the new singer for fear factory for example or um, marco pastorino joining uh, serenity now and he has temperance of course which are one of these uh, and then Michele Guetoli with Visions of Atlantis. These guys are doing super great jobs. Secret Sphere. Uh, oh, my God. Trick or Treat. Uh, uh, Alle Conti sings in, in Twilight Force. And then you have the, uh, Giacomo Wally's Rhapsody. Uh, the guys are great. They kill it on stage. Uh, um, 
it's a good moment for metal. There are a lot of new bands coming up. Uh, um, and I think that uh, some labels in particular uh, are doing a great job in investing in these new 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 bands. I wouldn't name the 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 labels because I don't want to to like you know uh, have preferences because I don't. Uh, but uh, but I do it. Fuck. I uh, Scarlet Records is doing yeah. a great job uh, in discovering and uh, promoting. Uh, this new better ah uh, deathless legacy the guys are great i don't know if you know them uh, no, I, but i will check check deathless legacy uh they they are like the female version of death ss so gothic horror uh uh image and uh nice catchy heavy metal music uh, they're great they're really really great yeah and it's many cool. more yeah, but let's go to to the main topic of this interview because everything go around to pizza. Yes, so you like pizza for sure. Absolutely, it's my favorite dish ever. Great. What's your favorite pizza? <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> how much time do you have? So the the problem is not what's on. The pizza. The problem is how the pizza is made, because I don't like thin pizza. Okay. I like big, big pizzas, uh, soft pizzas, not crunchy pizzas. I don't like crackers pizzas. Uh, and so, if you have a good uh, dough and a good base, you can put everything on it. I like basically everything on pizza except pineapple and shit like that because that's a blasphemy and the these people should be imprisoned forever because uh pizza is something sacred and you cannot uh do this blasphemies to pizza that Sorry. was uh, oh. amazing i was <laughs> going to ask you about the pineapple uh but don't the do it answer, so <laughs> I get I get overexcited if you ask me. My favorite toppings on pizza are mushrooms, sausage, pepperoni. What you call pepperoni? What oh, the Americans call pepperoni, uh, but it's salame. Uh, and then uh, I can take everything. Yeah, I'm an open. I'm an open guy. Where if did it's you pizza, eat, it's okay. Yeah. Where did you eat the best pizza? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I remember when I ate the worst because it was last year and I was in New York City okay. and I ate the worst pizza of my life. Uh, best pizza, uh, I would say... Uh, here in the place where I live, there's uh, this guy who makes fantastic pizzas. Uh, uh, I'm in uh, Ravenna. And uh, I have memories of beautiful pizzas in Sicily, uh, which is the place where I come from. Uh, but the pizzas in, Sicily's are, in Sicily are different. They're more like what in Italy we call focaccia, in the sense they are very very tall with no uh mozzarella cheese on top and just uh, red focaccias with um anchovies or stuff like that and it's a different type yeah typically yeah. typical dish yeah but uh, we are at the end of this uh interview of chat or how you want to call it and um good time good time Thank you, thank you for being my guest. Uh, do you want to say something to people that are listening and watching this interview? Yeah. Uh, follow Metal Pizza because it's very interesting. Uh, read a book. It, it Just one book a year. Read. It's so important. And when you listen to music, read the lyrics because music is 
lyrics and notes is not just notes that's it yeah that's really good and the book thinks it's a really important just one <laughs> at least one at least one yeah but uh, yeah. i hope that everyone this one was the last for this year and i hope that mm. everyone is going to have a great uh, end of 2023 and uh, 2024 is going to be great, I hope, for everyone. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. 